Good evening and welcome to the December 6th uh, town board meeting. I'd like to um, welcome you all, call this meeting to order, and I would like, would, would our supervisor elect, Mr. Jeff Leanhouse, would he like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And will our clerk, Amy Strickoff, please call the roll? Draw. Here. Cole. Here. Lee. Here. Hockaday. Here. Thank you. Um, our next order of business is we have some proclamations here, and I'm going to turn this over to... Um, to you want to do the um, guests in here? Okay, yeah, yep. start. All sure. right, perfect. I'll turn this over to Councilman Hockaday. Okay, um, I'm going to start off tonight's proclamations, and I'm going to ask Supervisor Draw to join me at the podium, oh. if you would, please. Hmm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Yes, here, go ahead. Just oh, just, yep, just, yep. I'll get the yeah. microphone here. Yeah. So, uh, Oh, yeah, Ken's in charge of pictures tonight, oh, okay. so we've got to make sure that we, uh, he's already made okay. that clear, so. Okay. But, um, so again, uh, thank you. Um, I have the uh, privilege and honor to uh, present tonight's proclamation to Supervisor Debbie Draw. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Debbie and Steve and Holly and Zach for, gosh, I, I guess more than 30 years, or around 30 years anyway, when we started out as neighbors um, in the same, same area. So um, it wasn't until recently, however, that um, it was Debbie who kind of gave me the nudge and said, hey, how about getting involved in local government? I said, no, no, it's, you know, I've got enough stuff to do. But uh, she persisted and, and over time convinced me to get involved. So I have you to thank for that. So again, uh, thank you. Um, I've enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, you were right, it is rewarding. So, um, but tonight, whoop. Sorry about that. Tonight we have a uh, proclamation that we want to present to you. Um, everything I could say is already in this, so I'm just going to read it so everybody can hear uh, some of the accomplishments that you have, um, you have done here over the years. So, uh, honoring a community-focused leader, Debbie Draw. Whereas Debbie Draw has served the Penfield community as an elected official since 2006, and whereas Debbie started her service on the town board in 2006 and in 2009 was appointed to serve in the Monroe County Legislature where she held office until 2019 when she was term limited. And whereas during her time in the Monroe County Legislature, she was vice president of the Monroe County Legislature, chairwoman of the Ways and Means Committee and Human Services Committees, as well as vice chair of Human Services and Public Safety Committees. And whereas Debbie returned to the town board in 2020 and served as deputy supervisor in 2022 and 2023. And whereas most recently Debbie was appointed to the role town supervisor in early 2023 and has graciously dedicated the past year to serving in this capacity. And whereas during her time as town supervisor, she has continued to push forward critical town of Penfield projects, including planning for rehabilitation of the Clark House and the construction of a new, a new Department of Public Works facility. And whereas, along with her work as an elected official, she has also served as chair of the Comprehensive Plan Committee and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. And whereas Debbie's work has had far-reaching impacts on the community, and whereas as an avid biker, walker, and runner, Debbie has worked tirelessly to increase the trail system and bike connectivity within the community, all while enhancing safety. Her commitment to this cause has helped generate positive changes, including moving forward the planning process for a mountain biking trails on the southern portion of the property. And whereas she has been a supporter of the local business community, including her work to improve the Four Corners Business District, most recently with a grant and enhanced holiday season experience. And whereas Debbie's strong leadership and dedication to continuous improvement will leave a lasting legacy on the town of Penfield. And now therefore, the town of Penfield extends its deepest gratitude to Debbie for all she has done for Penfield and its residents. This is dated December 6, 2023, and signed by Linda Cole, Councilwoman, Candace Lee, Councilwoman, and myself, Bob Ockenden. Thank you. Say something. Oh, say something? Yeah. Oh, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's standing. 
Thank you, guys. Oh my gosh, thank you all. Thank you all so very much. You know, Bob, thank you very much. Those are such kind words. And um, I want to thank the board, Linda and, um, and Candace. I'm serving with you, Amy, as well. Um, uh, I also would be remiss if I didn't thank all the residents of Penfield that have elected me and, and chose to elect me to represent them. So um, I, it's been an honor and a privilege um, to do so. Um, I don't take that lightly. I want to thank my husband, my family, who I gave up a lot of some, I gave up a lot of time sometimes for family family things. My daughter's here tonight, Holly. Um, my son Zach and uh, Steve, and thank you. Um, my father, who was who was 97 years old and still comes around here at the town town. Um, still, um, he's been my, a great supporter. And you know, my mom, I really come this by this by um, service for others. And my mother really was um, instrumental in teaching me that at a, at a young age. Um, she was an elected official in the town of Brighton and I, um, and I grew to understand how much service um, for others was um, an, such an important part of her life. So um, I, I don't take this lightly and I wanna thank all of you um, for giving, for the, allowing me to serve um, as a, um, here for so long in the town of Penfield. I will surely miss it. I've enjoyed working with the staff here. That's probably, I will really miss that. them. It's a great group of people to work with. Um, and uh, I guess that's, uh, I, I, I didn't think I'd get really sad about leaving, but I, I really will because it's a, a really wonderful place and I'm happy to have, um, to have um, been able to live here, work here, play here, retire here, and I'll be back, I'll be around. I'm gonna be here and I'm watching, and Jeff Leanhouse is gonna um, take over the, the helms here in uh, come January, and he's gonna do a fine job leading us as well. So thank you guys all, and have a good night. Thanks for coming. Good evening, everyone. Good evening also to Supervisor-Elect Jeff Leanhouts and to incoming Councilwoman Linda Teglash. Thank you for joining us, along with, of course, uh, many members of the Library Board and all of the committees that Linda had served on. It's my distinct pleasure tonight to read this proclamation honoring Linda Cole, who I believe is the longest tenured Councilwoman for the town of Penfield. <laughs> I think so. And the county, okay, there we go. We, it was a Herculean effort to try and reduce all her accomplishments and contributions to the town. And even if we tried, we wouldn't have enough fancy paper or printer ink to do that. Linda, in your almost four decades of service to the town, it's truly incredible. And thank you for for all, again, I, I only the highlights here, but we just cannot name every single thing that you've done. I think you've left a mark in every corner of Penfield and your legacy is, is truly something beautiful. Linda has served as chairperson or board liaison to literally every department and town committee and rotated through twice, if not more, in her 37 years. Her, her institutional knowledge was an asset to the board, to the board as well as the department heads and everyone who had the privilege to serve with you. Your service to this community is truly unmatched. Thank you. I'd like to now invite uh, Ken Cole, please, 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 please. Oh, but, We'd like, we'd like, uh, like Bob said, you know, town service, town service involves the family and, and spouses as well. And so I wanted to at least um, involve Ken in, in sharing this, this plaque and proclamation. We got to live in the, the moment, you know? And PCT even now records everything for, oh my goodness, they're going to outlive us all. 
All right. Now, whereas the decade after decades of service to the Penfield community, Linda Cole will be retiring from the Penfield Town Board upon completion of her term, December 31st. Linda has faithfully served the Penfield community since being first elected to the Penfield Town Board in 1991. And whereas throughout her decades of service, Linda has dedicated her life to making Penfield a better place. And whereas as town councilwoman, she has been a staunch advocate for enhancing open space and preserving the rich history of Penfield. And whereas Linda has been a strong supporter of the Penfield business community, she's served on the planning board, zoning board, parks and rec advisory board, waterfront revitalization committee, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Linda spearheaded the Penfield's bicentennial in 2010, was a member of the Open Space Committee in 2001, and was chair to that update committee in 2005. And the work of this lifelong Penfielder and her husband extends well beyond her roles with this town. Linda, don't cry. Come on. I, I, you're going to make me cry, and it's, this is not waterproof eyeliner here. Whereas she has been an active member of Penfield Rotary, volunteering countless hours, which includes serving as a president, and member of their board of directors. And outside of her work in the community, Linda is a proud wife and mother, and her contributions to the town of Penfield will again have a lasting impact and legacy for years to come. Now therefore, on behalf of the entire Penfield community, again, the library board and other members of, of the committee and our incoming supervisor and town councilwomen, we'd like to thank you for your decades of service. We have this small plaque, again, as a very small token of appreciation. I didn't know I was getting a proclamation tonight. All I knew is that there was coffee and cookies out there in the uh, reception. If anybody wanted to come say goodbye to Debbie and I, were welcome. And I'm glad so many people came to say goodbye. That was nice. Um, I appreciate the proclamation and all Candace's words. You know, she turned to me when we were sitting up there and says, you know, you've been doing this as long as I've been alive. <laughs> Talking about feeling a little, yeah, it's time to go. Because it's really 42 years ago, Irene Gossam was still, still supervisor, and that board put me on the Parks and Rec board. And I never left doing stuff for the town of Penfield. And it's, to me, it's fun. You know, I, I have such joy in, in working with the community and doing things that will benefit the community, get to know people and all that. So that's kind of like who I am. So it's been, it's been an honor to, to uh, represent the town as a town board member all these years. And it's also been a lot of, uh, it's been a joy. And I'm not going anywhere. I, I'm, we're not leaving town. And, and I'm still going to be on some advisory committees in Penfield and, and uh, do things around town. And if anyone has any uh, questions or concerns of you know, my institutional knowledge, I'm ready to. Uh, <laughs> To share it, I was talking Linda Taglish tonight. I said I'm, I'm around, you know, and Jeff, of course. Uh, I, I wish the new board a lot of luck, and, and uh, I'll be watching. It's going to be so different, you know. It's like Debbie and I leaving. We're like been around for a while, so you get some new people, some new blood. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to see what changes we made, and I appreciate. I appreciate everybody's interest in being involved. And if you know people who want to get involved, please pass it on. That we really are looking for people to that have passion for the community. There's always a spot for them. And thank you all for being here and for uh, that nice proclamation. I love working with these guys. Uh, I will miss seeing them on a regular basis, but I'm sure we will see each other. Yeah, and of course, these, these people as well. So thank you very much. And I have one more proclamation tonight to read. Um, and this is for a woman that's in the audience tonight. Her name is Roseanne Cohen. And she's, we're celebrating Roseanne as a conservation-focused community leader. Actually, she's going to be um, next week at the meeting. We'll also be recognized with her in her committee. But whereas Rose, Roseanne Cohen has a long history of service to the Penfield community, Roseanne has been involved with the town boards and committees since 2007. And when she began serving on the Town of Penfield Conservation Board, and most recently she has served on the Energy and Environmental Conservation Committee after the Conservation Board and um, the Energy and uh, Environmental Advisory Committee merged earlier this year. 
And whereas Roseanne has dedicated a great deal of her time and efforts to conservation efforts in Penfield. And the work includes reviewing developmental projects in Penfield and participating in events, educating the community on the importance of environmental conservation. She has been an advocate for the town of Penfield, becoming a member of the Tree City USA program and assisted in the development of the local tree law, which is currently being reviewed by this town board. And whereas the town of Penfield appreciates the dedication of Roseanne and her commitment to improving Penfield, now therefore be resolved that the Penfield Town Board extends its gratitude to Roseanne for her 16 years of work here in the town of Penfield. So Roseanne, thank you very much. I know you didn't want to be recognized tonight, but thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. And now we go on to um, uh, communications and announcements. So I'll start with our clerk. Thank you, Supervisor Drop. Thank you. Uh, the 10th annual Penfield Community Menorah Lighting event is scheduled for this coming Monday, December 11th at 5.30 p.m. The event will be taking place at the Four Corners in Shuffleburger Park uh, at the intersection of 441 and Five Mile Line Road. If you ha uh, require further information, please do not hesitate to call me at 340-8629. There will be potato pancakes known as lackeys as, and donuts to entice you in coming. So mm -hmm. um, again, that's December 11th at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. I'll be there. It's a wonderful event. Thank Excellent. you so much. I'll I be there too. <laughs> Councilman Ockaden. Thank you. I have a few uh, winter seasonal type uh, reminders to pass along. Um, Christmas tree recycling. The town of Penfield DPW accepts non-artificial trees for recycling at the highway garage located over here at 1607 Jackson Road. Trees can be dropped off any, at any time at the right side of the facility gates. Our winter parking restrictions are in effect. Um, this takes place from November 15th and will go on till April 1st. During this time, it's prohibited to park vehicles on streets, roads, or road shoulders, highways, residential roads, and cul-de-sacs between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. This is to ensure that town plows can clear our streets without any obstructions. If you need any more information about snow and ice management in Penfield, you may visit our website at penfield.org backslash snow. And while we're talking about snow, plow, uh, snow plows, we'll talk a little about snow plow safety. As you know, our, our crews have a very challenging job, uh, so we want to pass along some additional information. Uh, these crews are well trained and equipped to respond during winter storms, but it's important for motorists to contribute in keeping themselves and our drivers safe. To avoid accidents, please maintain a safe distance from the snow plow and do not crowd it. As the size of the truck is large, the operators cannot see directly behind it. When you encounter a snow plow, please slow down as it usually travels at a slower speed. Be aware of the yellow and amber lights on the plow and stay alert. Do not pass the snow plow on the right as it pushes snow to the right shoulder and may have a wing plow on the right hand side. Passing a snow plow on the right can be extremely dangerous. Avoid passing in a snow cloud and ensure that the road ahead is clear of vehicles of snow drifts before attempting to pass on the left. A snow cloud could be caused by crosswinds or the snow plow itself. Remember, snow plows also spread salt and de-icing agents that may spray your car. So be cautious while passing on the left and maintain a safe distance between the snow plow and your vehicle. And please do not pass a snow plow on the right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Councilwoman Cole. Debbie, uh, do you want me to read all the names of these Girl Scouts? If, if you just want I, I can do that. If, yeah. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a, it was a mill wheel, you know, the Girl Scouts mill wheel group. They were giving out uh, awards for the different girls for getting bronze awards, silver awards, gold awards. A lot of them were there. A lot of them weren't because it was right before Thanksgiving. So it was like people were away. But I, I shall read. I'll show you the names, not what they did, because a lot of them did some really outstanding projects, and, and they go back for a couple of years. But they uh, presented, we presented uh, <clears throat> the, the different awards to the, the students that were there. And I just read. So Jaden Stewart, Leah Mahaki, Maya Mullins, Sophia Cassano all received bronze awards, and we gave them certificates. Molly Denecki, Adeline Al Alkoyak, Guliano Costanza, Marina Wrights, Natalie Perry, Sophia Lilly, Charlotte Becker, Eleanor Canax, Brent, Brenna 
Fell, Mackenzie Stoutenberg, Riley Stoutenberg, Ella LaDuca all got silver awards. And the big one, the gold awards, we had Ray Freiberg, Freiberg Jessica Dawson, Carolyn Blair, Audrey DeVault, Lauren Gullick, and Bridget Taylor. So all these girls did some really outstanding projects to get there. You know, if, if you have girls and Girl Scouts, I had two. They, one went to Browns and that was it. But man, it, it takes a lot to get to the silver and gold and it's really impressive. All these Penfield resident uh, girls went that far on that level. So it was a fun little event and uh, it was, I was happy to be presenting on behalf of the town of Penfield. So the other announcements I have are the regular announcements. Lodge, Lodge and Shelter Reservations begins. The, 2000, the Town of Penfield's Lodge and Shelter Reservations began today at 10 a.m. Non-Penfield residents can register starting January 2nd. For the, more information to secure your spot at one of our beautiful lodges or cozy shelters, please visit www.penfield.org parks and support families in need. Please consider supporting the Penfield Ecumenical Food Shelf throughout the holiday season. By doing so, you can help someone in need and make a difference in the lives of Penfield families. There are multiple ways to do that. You can volunteer your time or donate supplies. To learn more on how you can help, check out the Food Shelf's website at www.penfieldecumenicalfoodshelf.org com or email penfieldfoodshelf at gmail.com. Your assistance, no matter how small, can make a world of difference in the holiday season. And finally, the Town of Penfield Community Pops Band is um, playing Monday, December 18th at 7.30 at the Bay Trail Middle School, www.penfield.org slash events for more information. One thing it's not, um, we haven't mentioned, but I just want to say how uh, we went to the Candace couldn't make it, but the three of us all went to the tree lighting and, and, uh, and we saw the tree in the Shovelberger Park when uh, it was lit on Friday night. And I just want to thank Supervisor Draw for really spearheading that. I, I, did, I had my little doubts about having an artificial tree in there after having all these uh, um, real ones all those years, you know, but it really looks magnificent. And uh, it really, the residents seemed to really like it. Uh, it was a pouring rain night and we came out there and people seemed to... You know, they were little kids saying, oh, it's so beautiful. beautiful. It was so nice to see the enthusiasm for it. So I thank Debbie for really and it's, but coming. It's, it's really all the residents' tree. It is. So it is. But, tree, so you, 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 you can all benefit from it. But th this person right next to me, she really uh, thank you. really wanted to put that up there. And it, it looks really fantastic. And thank you, Linda. Thanks. Thank you. Councilwoman Lee. The Penfield Trails Committee is hosting another guided scenic trek this Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon at Sherwood Fields. Meet us at the parking lot kiosk and look for the hike signs. The event is free, but registration is encouraged online at our website. If the weather is too cold for you for the guided hike, come indoors uh, with the Penfield Rec. Our annual holiday blast is scheduled for this Saturday as well, at the same time, 10 a.m. to noon at the Penfield Community Center. Please join us for an exciting day filled with games, crafts, music, and a special guest. Took a lot of pulling strings, but I'm told Mr. Santa Claus is going to be joining. Uh, speaking of Mr. Claus, the letters to Santa for children and family to receive a personal reply from Santa just in time for Christmas. Those letters have to be postmarked no later than December 9th. Penfield Recreation is, a, is uh, working on those so that little ones can send their wishes and messages and they'll get a personal reply uh, from, um, from Santa, AKA Penfield Rec. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact them or um, uh, check online for instructions on how to complete that. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a couple um, uh, announcements here. I did have a proclamation for the Small Business Saturday, which we, uh, ha which was, was actually this pa uh, is passed. It was Saturday, November 25th, um, in the town of Penfield. We urged all our residents to continue to support small businesses, um, merchants um, in our community, it's, as it's such an important um, to keep our, our community alive and our businesses alive here by shopping local. Um, and then my other announcement is the town hall offices are, will be closed um, and on Monday, December 25th, and also on Monday, January 2nd. So happy holidays and happy new year um, to you all. So, and with that, we're done with announcements. We're gonna go into our first of two public hearings. And the first one, um, if the clerk would like to read the, um, 
hearing to consider proposed modifications to the town's official hunting map to alter the specified boundaries related to changes to certain areas rural character and change the name to firearm discharge map. The legal notice was published in the Webster Herald on November 8th, 2023, posted on the town's website and town clerk bulletin board. No postcards were mailed due to this being a townwide uh, action. Thank you, and I'd ask our town attorney if this uh, hearing is in order. Yes, it is. Thank you, sir. With that, I will turn it over to, I believe, our town engineer, Mark Valentine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this has been several years in the, the process. Um, it's been a long time in coming and looking at doing updates to our, it's always been called the hunting map, and that's been a little bit of a misnomer. Um, we don't regulate hunting. That actually goes through the state DEC, and we're not looking to change where and how you hunt and, and the regulations surrounding distances from structures and everything else. So the only thing we're looking to do is update, and we've got, Carrie's got the map. Um, so we've got our official maps. We've posted them on the website. Um, we also have them in the room here if anybody wants to look at them. Um, but in looking at this map, we've got the, showing up as pink on the screen, the areas that we call the no fire discharge area. So first off, looking to change the map to the fire discharge map, um, firearm discharge map, not the hunting map. Um, and then incorporating areas that are now or will be uh, developed. So um, looking at the map to kind of working from top to bottom um, and the red area that's now currently the Cranberry Cove neighborhood. Um, so that is fully developed uh, with homes there. The orange area is a combination between um, what is now being developed for the school district for their new bus garage on the north side of Plank Road and then the Rocco Pines development on the south side of that area. Uh, the yellow area shows the area that was uh, rezoned to mixed use a number of years ago and now is currently under development. Um, we are showing an exception parcel in the middle for uh, the outlet rod and gun club. Um, and then as Carrie is going down further to the southeast, um, we have Helmsford Way. So off of um, Dublin Road is again a, a developed area. And then further south off of um, Fellows Road uh, is Arbor Ridge home development or um, senior housing in that area. One other amendment we added to this map is actually the Genesee Conservation League, and again, carries highlighting that. On the old map, there didn't show an exception for that. So we'd have two pre-existing mm -hmm. non-conforming gun clubs. We're not proposing any changes to the gun clubs. We're not you know, trying to restrict that. Um, so just trying to do some updates to the map to kind of reflect current developments, um, you know, what's in the area, but again, DEC regulates the actual hunting, so you can still bow hunt on, on the other areas. You still need to comply in all areas mm -hmm. um, with the rules and regulations. If you are a hunter with your uh, the hunting regulations, distance from structures, proximities to schools, churches, um, you know, if it's not your land and having permission to hunt on someone's land, um, so the town of Penfield is not looking to change or, you know, modify jurisdiction on that. Um, just wanted to kind of put that clarification together. And then the last map uh, Carrie brought up, that kind of just shows if these proposals move forward, the board does adopt this, this would be the adopted new map showing that that revised boundary line area there. So um, tonight we're here to collect information from the public, um, you know, hear thoughts, feedback on those proposed changes, and then, you know, we can still modify if, if needed or wanted from there. Great. Thank you. Um, I know that there's several people who have signed up to speak tonight at this public hearing. I will ask the clerk. Yes, the first one I have is Dave Woodward. <clears throat> Dave Woodward, I should also thank you for that beautiful Christmas, Christmas tree that's out in our rotunda. You're welcome. Thank you. Dave Woodward, 1530 Harris Road. One, I'm glad that you put the exceptions for the two gun clubs because I can see someone trying to go and be a very good attorney and trying to, find, you know, if they were included in the no discharge and trying to shut them down in a manner. So I hope, I'm glad that's out of there. I guess the only thing I would be concerned about tonight is if there's individual landowners that do not want to be included in the no discharge areas at this time that they would, you know, leave those out until a future time when they would be developed. So there potentially could be some individuals there. Um, and as the areas continue to get developed, you know, recognizing that a lot more wildlife will be pushed into the agricultural areas, 
you know, which are a problem for the few farmers that are left. And I know that primarily what you're concerned about is the discharge where the properties have been developed. And so, you know, I recognize that that, you know, is a thing to deal with. And uh, I'm glad you are changing the name to a no discharge and from uh, the hunting because that isn't the way it has been, you know. So I really didn't have much to say. Um, and I hope that uh, the rest of the evening goes well. Thank D you. Dave, can you just also state your address again? We know. 1530 Harris Road, Penfield. We know that, but just for the record, thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Sue Unkless. Good evening, Sue. Sue, if you just want to give us your address, too. Oh, 1340 Plank Road. Thank you. Um, the line, while we appreciate the effort the town's made to try to move it, I'm a little confused about the no hunting and no discharge of firearms because, in effect, I was prepared to stand up here today and talk about hunting. But, but no discharge of firearms will mean no hunting. So I'm just gonna go ahead with that. Um, moving the line where you, where you propose to, to move it is really kind of backwards because there's really no protection for us east of the line. You've, you've kind of moved it already to 250. So east of 250 is where the problems of the discharging of the firearms really is. And the areas where you have proposed to move it slightly over from Jackson Road really doesn't help much because nobody's going to be discharging firearms in the housing tracks and shooting in the housing tracks. They're going to be east of that line in the fields, in the woods, shooting, you know, and that type of thing. So we're, we're kind of at a loss to... I guess what I'm trying to say is this isn't the Adirondacks or the Southern Tier. We're a small community, and just because there's a little bit of land without a house on it doesn't mean you can be shooting there. So we're proposing that the town consider moving the line east a mile and a half to Salt Road. And in a meeting that we had a little while ago with Supervisor Draw and Doug, uh, the planner, the town planner. Yep. Doug, Doug Sangster. Um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was discussed and maybe suggested that it would be too hard to pocket these areas where we figured that it would be a huge problem. There are, do you have the copies? Does everybody have copies up there of the material that we, in our meeting that we, with you, they do you were, have copies of there? Have you seen? They were sent to us, yes. Okay. They were sent to the board, yes. All right, so there's They're several different the pockets up mm -hmm. there of, of areas that are really critical where there's too much shooting going on. And so we're proposing to, to take the line right down Salt Road. It's, an, it's a mile and a half from 250 where you've kind of already put it. And a mile and a half isn't gonna, isn't gonna have any hardship at all for anybody who wants to shoot east, you know, east of that. And if you take it from the Webster town line, right straight down Salt Road to the Fairport town line, it's five and a half miles. So again, it's no hardship for anybody who wants to shoot or hunt. And it's very easy to determine where the line is. I mean, there's no little jig jags and there's no little pockets here and pockets there and here, here you can and here you can't. It's going to be very easy to, to show where you can shoot and not shoot, hunt and not hunt. Um, east of the line, go ahead and shoot. West of the line, no, no, no discharge of firearms west of that line, which would be west of Salt Road. So I think this change needs to be made. There's a lot of really dangerous areas. There's too much shooting going on. Now, I don't know if any of you up there live um, east of the line. I live just east of the mm -hmm. line. If any of you do, you don't live, anybody mm -hmm. live east of the line? No. 
okay, so in all due respect, you don't get what we go through with all this shooting and hunting and uh, you got kids waiting for a school bus and hunters across the street shooting. I mean, I'm not okay with that. I don't know if any of you are, but I'm not okay with that. And there's, there's a lot of, if you look at the um, material that we presented in our meeting with the supervisor, mm -hmm. there's a lot of riding stables in the area, especially around Penfield Center Road. One of these days, somebody is going to mistake a deer for uh, a mistake a horse for a deer, and somebody's going to get shot. I'm surprised somebody hasn't done it already. So we're just concerned because it's gone on for too long, and there's too much of it going on. And like I said, if you don't live east of the line, you really don't have a clue how much we've had to put up with this. Um, there's, there's already been a death at the gun club, and that's a con in a controlled environment. So, and it was negligence. So what are we doing with the hunters and the people who are running around shooting in the woods? That's not controlled. So I guess I could s stand up here for an hour, but I'm not going to. So I guess I'll just leave it and say that the town has a chance now to prevent anything from happening, any other accidents, any, uh, some, someday and soon, it's not gonna, if it's gonna happen, it will happen. And one of these days, somebody's, I, I hope it's not a child waiting for the school bus or picking pumpkins in um, Wickham Farms or walking in Sherwood Park. There's too many parks around. People are walking in these parks and there's no protection for us here. Um, we just want protection. And we're not getting it. It's not the people in the housing tracks that need protection. We are the ones that need protection from these firearms. And I'm not trying to make people give up their firearms or stop hunting. We just want protection. And I think if the town doesn't act on this and do something about it now when you have the chance, when something happens, everybody's going to remember that you had a chance to change it, and you didn't. Everybody's going to remember that because this is public now. And so I hope, really hope you take it into consideration and take a good look at, at this before something happens that you could prevent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Appreciate it. No comments. I think this is Marie Torello. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Just before, they, I just want to clarify, hunting is allowed throughout all of Penfield. It's the firearm discharge is the line we're talking about tonight. So if you bow hunt or other hunt, as long as you meet the regulations, it is allowed, and that's the part that's dictated by DEC. So hunting is allowed throughout Penfield as long as you comply with regulations that, that are distance to structures and everything else. And I just wanted to provide that clarification. Thank you for that. Thank you. Marie Trello, 1862 Harris Road. Thank you for the opportunity to talk. Marie. So um, I just have an inquiry, really. Um, as I live on Harris Road, which is close to the intersection of Sweets Corners, um, what was the requirements that my area didn't meet to be included in the line that they're moving, which would have given me a lot of protection? Uh, particularly, uh, my lot is just over 100 foot wide. So are most of the lots. Um, they're deep. Now, apparently they can hunt there, but the problem is um, I've got trial dogs, sporting dogs, that's my sport. I can't walk them out there during hunting season because I don't know they're there. I hear them when I'm out there. I've got to stop and come inside. I've no idea where they are. So, um, like Miss Amplis said, I also feel unprotected and very vulnerable. So, uh, that is my question whatever the requirements are that these people were able to meet, 250. Um, could you tell me where Harris Road area failed in that? The updates we added were just new areas of, of denser development. This is the public hearing and obviously amendments to the plan can still be made. Um, that's why we're here tonight to get input. I believe the board's gonna keep this open. Mm -hmm. um, so if people have other comments, uh, amendments to it, we just took areas that are newly, mostly subdivision development, um, which are smaller lots in that area. But that's the purpose of tonight is to gather further input and um, the board could entertain further revisions to the map. Oh, thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. 
Uh, that's it for this particular one. Is there anyone in the audience that it did not sign up to speak and would like to speak at this? Yeah. Uh, on the, not about this. Uh, the, okay, you're on a different, yes, sir, yes. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Bill, nice to see you, nice to see you. Yeah. Bill Vendel from 1267 and 71 Webster Road. And um, I just want to say that if you make it difficult to control these deer, uh, they're going to be out of control. We have a wilderness area right in the middle, the thousand acre swamp, feeding these deer out into the rural areas. And if they're not controlled in some way, they're just going to, it's just going to be worse. And I really don't enjoy watching them melt on the shoulder of the road when they get hit by cars because we don't have the money now to pick them up. And uh, if you've ever tried to make a living off the land and watch the deer destroy everything, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult. And um, I really don't see if a person has uh, a large parcel of land, his own land, that he shouldn't be able to go out and hunt on his own land. I don't think anyone should be able to tell someone you can't go out and shoot on, if you have a 10, 20, 40 acre parcel, and you're a responsible hunter, you should be able to go out and exercise your right. The syllabus here spells it out. You cannot shoot within 500 feet of a dwelling. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's right in the New York State DC law. So if someone's breaking the law, then the police should be called. But if you don't control the deer, it's just gonna get worse. And there's gonna be so many deer, because deer are very adaptable. They can adapt to like a little 500 square foot of brush. And they'll live in there and then at night, they'll go out, I've seen them in the subdivisions devouring landscaping. I get out early and I'm snow plowing and the deer are out there. But they go back and they bed down before anybody's awake. So if you, you know, take that away. And I want also clarity about bow hunting, crossbow, is that is crossbow and bow going to be eliminated? That I mean, it is a dis, it is a qualified um, firearm. We're not looking to change DEC regulations on that, so that's why I wanted to clarify earlier that hunting right. is allowed across the town. So this is just gun discharge line as we're talking about. If you have land and meet the requirements, you can bow hunt. You know, it shows bow hunting and. Um, is allowed on the bay, is allowed you know, on your property, is, you know, as long as you comply with that. Um, we've got the gun clubs, and then I know that, you know, farmers have nuisance permits um, yeah. on their land as well, and we're not looking to change or override that. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate the comments. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? A new, new person in the back? Yes, yes, sir. I'll get back to you, um, Dave, after I hear everybody first. Good, Good evening, evening, everybody. Good evening. How you doing? Uh, I'm Ben Derry. <clears throat> I live at 1364 Jackson Road in Webster. Yep. Um, I own uh, roughly over 40 acres there, and I've been hunting there since I've been 12 years old. And I was just wondering if uh, this is passed, is there any regulation that I can still able to fire a firearm in that area? I own almost 40 acres of land. Well, uh, ben, I'm just looking at the map, you know, as far as where your area is. I mean, the majority has been transferred to the school district. You've got a smaller. I still, I still own 30, almost 30 acres of land next to it. Okay, I mean, we can look at where that piece or that area falls. Again, that's why we're here tonight and we can ad adjust that, that line. We kind of just followed the back of where the school district boundary was, but you know, we can look at an amendment to that if. Yeah, that lower farm is all, a little over 30, or 30 acres, you know, it's, it's plenty of room, to, you know, to fire a firearm there. You know, okay. It's responsible hunters, you know what I mean? So, and if it's not, it's, um, I heard that if you have, um, I don't know if it's true, you have so many acres, you're still allowed to fire a firearm. This map, if you're west of that line, you would not. You could still bow hunt on that land even if you're west of that line. So we'd, right. we could have to look at a modification to that. All right. All right. That's what I needed to know, you know. Ben, can you repeat your address, please? 
address? That's 1364 Jackson Road. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Anyone? There was another new, someone new? Yes, sir. In the back. Good evening. All right. Good. Uh, I'm at 1250 Jackson Road. Yep. And can, the you just, line, can you just tell us your name? My name's Jake. And the line is going to make it so I can't discharge a firearm as well. And I heard, I was watching this online, and everybody seems to think it should keep going more and more east. But I, I, I don't know why. If, if, if you're pointing the gun at a safe direction, it, it, I don't know how it should affect any of this. But, I mean, why, why not go to County Line Road? Why not go? Why not keep going east? I mean, if, if I'm safely hunting and I have a firearm, I'm, I understand the whole subdivision thing. But you don't aim a gun near a subdivision. So, so why are we keep making these rules? We should just. You know, it's already, in, it's, it, we already know we can't be 500 feet from a house unless permission. So I, I just, I don't understand why, why these rules keep getting in place. I have um, dough all over the property, eating the crops, and now I can't even shoot a gun. It just doesn't seem right, it doesn't seem fair. I, I don't know where we're drawing the line here. Um, how far east are, you know, next year are we going to talk further and further? How, how far are we going to go? Well, I think one of the things that Mr. Valentine was trying to share with us, we were trying to clean up some of these areas where there's new housing developments and oh, new yeah, developments. Oh, yeah, And that's why we have to do, because the old map doesn't, doesn't have this. Right, you know. but now I can't shoot a firearm, and I have 30 acres, <laughs> just like Ben Barry has 30 mm -hmm. acres. I mean, that, that's not right in my well, opinion. That's why we have this hearing tonight to listen yeah, no, to, I'm, I'm listen to everybody. He's, he's just voicing. Yep. I, I appreciate yes. where you're coming yeah. from. It doesn't yeah. make any sure. sense. You own yeah. all this property and you can't even use your gun. I understand. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to go point at, you know, this this house. Sure. Yes, I know the subdivision is there yeah. now and it's new, but I'm not going to just go and point it at. The, I can point it a million other directions. Right. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to get that out there that us hunters are, we're safe. Mm -hmm. and you know, we know where we can and we can't point the gun. And I, I just feel like that should be brought, because I heard on um, line I was watching, um, somebody had said they they think that we should go to Salt Road. Well, should we go to County Line? How, how, how far should we yeah. keep going? Yeah. There's subdivisions all over the place. We, we need to be able to still use guns for, for deer, especially if we own 30 acres. Just seems a little bit crazy. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Jake, you mentioned watching it first online and then joining. I just want to say thank you for driving in yeah. to share your piece. Yeah. Um, I, we're back. To, would Dave like, did you want a second time to speak? As long as everyone else has already spoken the first time, thank you. Welcome back, Dave. Yeah. The previous speaker was speaking in regards to Louise Cleary's property, his family's property, just so you had a recognition of Fred adjacent to Mr. Right. Cleary's. Um, my, I guess the issue I have is that I own approximately 300 acres east of 250, and I rent probably an additional 300 acres east of uh, Harris Road to Salt Road. And to say it wouldn't be a hardship to extend that area, um, I'd like somebody to write me a check for deer damage, you know, or, or wildlife damage. You know, it'd only be like five figures. So if somebody thinks it isn't a hardship, you know, not being able to control some of these things, write me a check. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Is there anyone up? Uh, Sue, would you like a chance to speak again? Sure. Okay. Yep, absolutely. That's fine. That's what the hearing's for. I just have to come back up and comment about the two gentlemen that stood up and said, where do we stop? Where do we take the line? And the, the DEC was mentioned and the police were mentioned. One of the reasons why we are so concerned, this group that I have and Marie has a part of, is that the police and the DEC won't get involved. The hunters that we have encountered do not follow the rules. They're shooting not within the 500 foot rule. They're, it's dangerous. Um, they're, excuse me, you can have another turn if you All want. Right. Um, 
they don't follow the rules. They don't follow the rules where I live. Now maybe in other parts of the town they do. But one of the reasons we're here tonight is because the DEC and the police don't follow the rules. I mean, the hunters don't follow the rules and the police and the DEC do not do anything. So it's gotta be up to the town okay. to do something. The police have told me point blank, word for word, exactly, unless you're shot, or your property is damaged, we're not doing anything. The DEC is in Avon, and I think they have a couple of people out this way, but if you have a problem and you call them, they either don't show up or they show up a couple of days later, and it's a moot point. So because of that, we feel that the town has gotta to take responsibility and step up and do something. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Sue. Jake, did you, or would you like to speak, sir? Yes. Gary. Good evening. Yep. Uh, Gary Smith, hey, Gary. owner of Nature's Accents, 1250 mm -hmm. Northrop Road in Penfield. We own 75 acres of property between Northrop and Plank Road. And I just want to show some proof of what the deer damage can do. Um, this is, I don't know if you see, this is a picture of some trees we have in one of our blocks mm -hmm. that we try to protect them with the tree guards, but the deer, they go through and they just rip the tree guards up. We have 36 trees that are unsellable in this one block alone. Uh, a year and a half ago, we had 162 trees we had to cut down and burn. We had to get apply for a burn permit for the town of Penfield so that we could burn 162 trees that we could not sell because of deer damage. Uh, they went through, they damaged them. It takes about six to eight years on average to grow a, a tree to a caliper that we sell. Mm. Average selling price, three to $600 for a tree installed. And you can do the math of how much mm -hmm. damage that is and how much uh, it costs us as a business. This here is a picture of a, a video we took panning across our hay field uh, one night. If you count the deer in this photo, there's 27 deer at one night, at one time, just panning across the field. And they're just, again, devouring your crops and whatnot. So obviously we have to be able to manage our property uh, by hunting. Um, you know, deer uh, gun is one way, nuisance permits is another. Um, but the amount of damage they do is, is, is incredible. And again, if we're not managing them, your cars are going to be the next thing that are managing them. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, I appreciate it. Jake, did you want a chance to speak again? Yes, yes, yes sir. I just want to make the point that the rules of the 500 feet are in place so people follow them. So as the two speakers ago said, you know, these hunters apparently are not following the rules, well then they should be arrested. I've been following the rules my whole life. I've never shot, never had a problem with shooting anybody because I follow the rules. I'm not aiming my gun at somebody. It has nothing to do with the line of where you can shoot a firearm. It, that, that's, that's totally based on where you're shooting your gun, it, like in direction, nothing to do with the line. Like the line can be anywhere. If I'm shooting towards somebody, I'm gonna hit the person. That's, that's the whole point of the, you know, if I have 30 acres, and I'm 500 feet away, I'm following all the rules, and I'm aiming away from people, then I'm not going to hit anybody. Just want to put that out there. You know, if you follow the DC rules, which she said nobody does, or hunters don't, well, then they should be arrested. I mean, it's, it's, it's 101 basic stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jake. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this? Yes, sir. Ben. And then we'll wrap it up, I think, after Ben. I think we've probably heard from everyone. And then I just want to ask one more, one more question. Sure. Has there been any instances in Penfield? That you, can you go in front of the microphone, sir? Thank you. Has there been any instances in Penfield that somebody has uh, discharged a firearm and has caused a problem that we know of? Shot anybody? Hit a car? Shot a, shot a house? Is there anybody in Penfield that's in the history in Penfield has it happened? 
I don't think so. I don't know. Is, is, I don't know if that's a rhetorical question or not. I'm, I'm sure it, it, there could be, but I, I do whether they're the. Well, I, I think we'd have to. Yeah, we don't have the the resource or information to confirm or deny. That would be housed I've, if a complaint was filed by the police, an arrest or whatnot, or a complaint filed with the town. But the board sitting here tonight wouldn't be able to answer for all of, you know, Christendom. Has there ever been an incident? We just wouldn't be able to confirm or deny that. But I appreciate the question and the, the thought process that you're trying to raise by asking that question. Yeah, because in the history that I've lived here, I've never heard of anything happening, ever. So okay. just want to lay that Thank out you. there. Sure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Sure. appreciate it. OK, so as Mark had stated, we're going to keep this um, pu public hearing open. And we'll be continuing this on uh, for comments. And, um, we are. How long? Mark, how long would we? Because we're. we're I mean, we can. You can set a date to close it. Um, obviously, given people at home, if they want you know, to provide comments to. and emails mm -hmm. in, we can look at different parcels and then, you know, adjust it as, as the board uh, <laughs> sees direction to that. But if we uh, gave it um, to the end of the month, does the board feel comfortable if we give it to the end of December? There's no other meetings. So. Yeah. It, leaving it open if yeah, we just don't have it. another meeting for the board to, to discuss it, it at this point to, at this time if we're adding or subtracting or if right. it's anything but this exact map we don't have an opportunity for it the board's be up discussion to the, ne the next board to really discuss no this. I, I understand that I don't yeah. I don't understand the point of keeping it open but I'm not opposed to keeping it open I just don't see the point but oh we could just just take we can close this hearing and take still take additional comments yeah, I mean, I don't That's think we're having fine. more verbal That's public fine. hearing, but That's just fine. people can send in comments through right. email right. or yeah. phone right. call or whatever else. Then we can do that. That's close the part I meant of keeping it open. Is okay, then we can close it, and as long as we can take additional com com comments through the end of the month. Okay. And, and I, um, Amy, can I just ask, um, after the meeting, there was a one of the public speakers, I think, um, I, I'm sorry to, to single single him out by, by name, but I, I'm just curious as to the address for the for Jake who spoke tonight. I think he said Jackson, but if you can just please distribute that to the board after, yeah, I'd like to review. Address. Great, thank you. I'd like to ref review with further comment with uh, town engineer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. We'll close that public hearing then. And then what we have public hearing number two, Amy. To consider a proposed local law, which if adopted, would provide a tax exemption for volunteer fire and ambulance workers. The legal notice was published in the Webster Herald on November 8th, 2023, posted on the town's website and town clerk bulletin board. No postcards were mailed due to this being a town-wide action. Supervisor Draw, mm -hmm. um, I'll be recusing myself from this public hearing due to a conflict as a first responder. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I'll ask our town attorney if this um, public hearing is in order. Yes, it is. Thank you. I'll turn this over to um, Ms. Ivers. Sure, I'd be happy to provide some comments. So this is um, a, Thank you. Um, Thank you. a proposed amendment uh, to Chapter 207 of the town code that would uh, expand the exemptions offered based on recently adopted uh, state regulations. And I'm looking to our town attorney to make sure I describe that properly on behalf of Chris Lyons. I think so. That's correct. So what happened is there was a provision, the way that the, the state enacted all these firefighter exemptions, they would enact a separate section for every county and at the end of last year, maybe the year before, they eliminated all those effective at the end of 2025 and, and replaced them with a generally applicable across the state provision. But in order to take, in order to, and it slightly expanded upon what Monroe County's provision was, but it made it consistent across the state and that's what this, this amendment changes our code to be in conformity with uh, section, I think it's um, 466A of the real property tax law. Thank you. Thank you. I'll ask the clerk if there's anyone signed up uh, to speak at this public hearing? No. No. Okay. So unless there's any questions from the board, I would close this public hearing and um, move on. Next item on the agenda is um, public participation. There are three ways tonight that you can um, participate in person <coughs> here if you've signed up. You can also email here to, at, at www.penfield.org or you can also phone in at 340-8771. Is there, I'll ask the clerk if anyone signed up to speak tonight. Chris Chauvin. 
Hello, Chris. How you doing? Good evening. Uh, my name is Christopher Chauvin. I live at 24 Old Westfall Drive. Adjacent to my property is uh, 21 Woodhaven. And uh, I received uh, an email today that said that the uh, K2 Brewery was rescinding their uh, effort to try and have a, uh, a zoning change to that property to uh, have a parking permit, a parking area permitted there. And I haven't heard anything about it except from this email. And I wondered if you knew anything about it. Yes, and I can actually turn this over to Ms. Ivers, can share with uh, um, Yes, and, and certainly the town attorney can jump in as well. We did submit an item uh, for new business that will be brought up later in the evening. Um, requ uh, a request came in from the property owner asking to rescind the prior approvals granted to 41 Woodhaven for the incentive zoning and also for the uh, subdivision and site plan approvals that were pre previously granted by the town board um, because they do no they lo no longer need that potential uh, uh, parking uh, ancillary mm -hmm. parking. So. Um, the town board is going to be presented with that new business item, and I believe they plan, it, it, they have the opportunity to take the vote on that, and that this evening. That would be this evening? Yeah, that would be this evening, correct. Yeah, That'd be good to know. I would like to say that, I would like to know, does that mean that <clears throat> if they rescind their uh, request, that it's going to reserve, it's going to revert to being a residential zone that it was before, residential. Yeah, the underlying zoning never changed. It was an application of incentive zoning, and so the underlying zoning remains the same. It remains the same. So I'm not going to have a parking lot at the bottom of my hill, according to this, right? Is that good? You won't have that parking lot below the hill. I don't know. There's a part of the Howitt development that includes some parking, but well, not yeah, the K2 that's parking. A, see, what Mr. Howitt development did is that he used that area that he said was going to be for a parking lot that he was trying to get K2 involved with, was going to rent from him. He uses that now as a parking lot. He built the parking lot. He just parks all of the equipment for the development there. You know, and I looked into it, and it's, it's his land, and he's perfectly within his right to park any vehicles that he needs for construction on that land. But I just want, once the construction is finished, I don't want this to become yet a parking lot, even though there is no zoning for it. There's no, I want to make sure that this is done. It's my understanding that that's uh, temporary for construction purposes only. Right, right. Yeah. In order to make it be parking, he'd have to get a, uh, well, he'd have to change the zoning because it is residential, and then he'd have to get a site plan approved to use okay. it for parking, oh. among other things. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, I'll just stick around and see how the voting goes. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else signed up to speak? Oh. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak tonight on any, any item? This is your chance. Okay. So uh, I will close public participation. And uh, with that, I have a, the next item on the agenda is additions and deletions to the agenda. Board, Yes. I think we have a few. We'd like to add uh, 241 and 242. Mm -hmm. I have a motion by um, Councilwoman Cole to add 241 and 242. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councilman Lee. So can we have a roll call vote on that? Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ockaden. Aye. Four ayes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We just clarified 242 is um, the two purchase of two is the tax the exemption for senior citizens. Nope. Oh, wait. Yeah. All right. And. Do I have that? Uh, oh, no, you're no, right. 243. Very good. Yeah, it's 240. Uh, Three yeah. is the one for... Is that Woodhaven? No, that's no. the disabilities and limited income or tax, the real property tax exemption there. So it's 242 and 243. And we have and, two... Uh, and, and 
three other new businesses. New business. So we're adding 245 and 246. Yes. We're adding two. So the number of new business we have are number 242, 243, 244. 244 is the ARPA uh, recovery funds allocation. 245 is the rescinding you. Oh, thank you. You. of the project located on a portion of 41 Woodhaven Drive. Okay. And, and then we have a last one that came in today. last, but we oh, sent them to you as well, okay. uh, to submit a purchase offer for real property. 246, that's So enough. it's going from 242 to 246? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm sorry. so I, I changed what I said before. And I'll second the modified <laughs> move. 222 thank you. to 2, yep. So 242 to 246 yeah. is moved yeah. by Cole so. and second by Lee. Second by Lee. Thank you. Oh. Did okay. everyone vote? Uh, yeah. We can do the vote again since yes. we uh, I, added. So draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akaden. Aye. Perfect. Four ayes. Thank you. Board, you have the approval, or uh, you have the minutes of the November 1st meeting before you. I'd like uh, if, uh, any discussion. Otherwise, I'm not looking for approval of minutes. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Moved by Cole, second by Akadin. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. All right. Board, has anyone received any petitions? No. Seeing none. Uh, moving to resolutions by function. Madam Clerk. Okay. Authorization for this town supervisor to sign a professional service contract amendment with Barton and LeJudas for townwide traffic study. So moved. Second. The town board authorizes Barton and LeJudas to complete a townwide traffic study to evaluate existing conditions and identify future potential traffic and road improvements on March 29th, 2023. Based on the increased traffic and accident volumes that need to be evaluated, additional monies will be needed to complete the study. Barton and Judas have submitted a new proposal to complete the study at a cost not to ex exceed $22,700. The monies for the contract amendment are available in the 2023 adopted budget for the engineering department. Barton and LeJudas is the town's traffic consultant for 2023 per resolution 23T-25 dated January 4th, 2023. Be it resolved that Barton and LeJudas be authorized to complete the town ride traffic study at the request of the town board. The deputy supervisor is authorized to sign a contract with the Barton and LeJudas as authorized according to the submitted proposal and project scope in the amount of 22,700 for the traffic study. And let's amend that to say town supervisor, not deputy supervisor. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akaden. Aye. Four ayes. 2023 transfer of funds to restricted fund balance in the highway fund. So moved. Second. Projects completed for Monroe County interest earnings as well as equipment sales resulted in an increase in unanticipated revenue in the highway fund. Therefore, be established to reserve funds within the highway fund balance for future equipment purchases. The following 2023 transfers approved from highway fund balance $800,000, the Highway Restricted Reserve Fund balance to $800,000. Thank you. This is something we've been doing for several years. It's equipment for Mr. Tate here, our director of DPW, and is a, um, equipment for the DPW needed, and it's just appropriate um, appropriating money for our fleet to improve our fleet. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akaden. Aye. Four ayes. Budget transfers for the general highway and library funds and budget amendments in the general fund. So moved. Second. Transfer of funds are necessary for anticipated expenditures and reconciliations in the year and approaches. Amendments are necessary within the recreation account due to the enrollment changes and anticipated year and programming. The town board desires to have an up-to-date budget in relation to current income and expenditures. Be it resolved, the attached 2023 budget transfer and amendments are approved. And there's a number of them. I don't think you need to hear me read them all. But uh, the total general fund in the end is the transfer of $140,800. And, uh, and then into the highway, highway fund, 
200 and the uh, library fund 200 and uh, amendment revenue for the recreation of revenue to uh, from 54,000 to 54,000 I think I have all that any discussion I think. thank you Thank you. And these, again, just re, uh, year-end reconciliation. Of different revenue funds. Revenue funds, yep. Sure. And I want to just recognize that Dina Herkel from our uh, library is here today to represent the library. So thank you for that. And uh, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ockenden. Aye. Four ayes. Acceptance of a grant from the Kenlu Foundation Fund for biking, hiking, shared use trail projects. So moved. Second. The town received a grant in the amount of $10,000 from the Kenlu Foundation Fund, a component fund of the Rochester Area Foundation, Community Foundation, to fund the biking, hiking trail study at Shadow Pines property. The funds will be used solely for biking and hiking shared use trail projects. Any unspent funds remaining after the completion of the trail study will be coded as such to restricted fund balance within the general fund and any funds received in the future for like shared use trail projects will be similarly recorded in the town's financial records. The town board desires to have an up-to-date budget in relation to the current income expenditures. So the revenue from the grant donation shared use trails of 10,000 will go into the appropriations for shared use trails for biking and hiking. And I should add that um, this um, grant came from the Ken Liu Foundation, which is uh, uh, Rick Williams, who is a, a long, uh, lifelong resident here in Penfield, is gracious enough yes. to um, to share um, some of this foundation money for w uh, with us for this. His um, passion is um, biking and shared use trails, and um, he grew up around the um, the Shadow Pines uh, area, um, and this is near and dear to him. And I know that keeping that uh, that uh, area as um, pristine as possible um, for is, is is extremely important so we thank um, Rick for his uh, his help in this so okay. we're looking forward to that next year so any other roll, roll call vote please it's, I, I have a couple questions oh, sure. so always great to receive grants we thank mm -hmm. the um, RACF for that mm -hmm. um, it's being used to fund the trail study do we have any idea yep. what that estimate is the estimate was I think approximately ninety ninety six hundred dollars I believe it, it, I don't have it right in front of me. Um, so okay, so, so most of it is going to it. be used. Yep, right. It's just very little, a <coughs> couple hundred that's going to be in the restricted fund balance. Okay. Exactly. Yep. I can get it for you if you'd like to see that. No, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Hockaden. Aye. Four ayes. Adoption of the New York State Unified Solar Permit. So moved. Second. Town of Penfield adopted a New York State Uniform Fire Prevention Building Code, the Uniform Code, and the State Energy Conservation Construction Code, the Energy Code, to provide minimum requirements to safeguard public safety. The Town of Penfield Code Enforcement Officer administers and enforces all the provisions of the New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code and New York State Energy Code and the Code for the Town of Penfield. The Town of Penfield requires the issuance of a building permit for any work which is done to conform to the Uniform Code and Energy Code, including but not limited to the construction, enlargement, alteration, improvement, removal, or demolition of any building or structure of which portion thereof. And whereas New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code regulates the design, construction, installation, alteration, and repair of equipment and systems using solar systems, the New York State Energy Research Development Authority has developed a New York State Uniform Solar Permit that reduces the cost for solar projects by streamlining municipal permitting processes. The Town of Penfield Town Board desires to promote the streamlining of the application process for the small-scale photovoltaic system installation for 25 kW in size of adopting the New York State Uniform Solar Permit application form and implementing the new procedures. This action is classified as a Type 2 action pursuant to Seeker, and uh, no further environmental review of this action is required. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Penfield hereby adopts the New York State Uniform Solar Permit application form and procedure for the installation of small-scale photovoltaic, I gotta get that word, system, 
But in, in further uh, resolution, the town of Penfield Code Enforcement Officer is hereby directed to use the New York State Uniform Solar Permit application to the issuance of the building permits for the installation of the small scale photovoltaic systems and be it further resolved. Any further action required by the town of Penfield in effect of the foregoing are thereby authorized by the town supervisor to is hereby authorized to execute and deliver any instruments, documents, or like as required to affect the same. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, discussion, questions? Is this something we just want to get up to date in our, um, in our building yes. uh, department? And much needed now that the solar is, um, is here to say. Yes. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Good in. Aye. Four ayes. Adoption of the Town of Penfield 2024 fee schedule for various departments and applications. So moved. Second. The town water authorizes and sets and amends fees from time to time. The town staff has identified some minor additions and changes to make the fee schedule consistent with other department operations. Be it resolved that the attached fee schedule for 2024 is in effect as of January 1st, 2024. Now this is a very lengthy fee schedule of all sorts of different um, opportunities. And it shall be on the website. Yes. What would it be under? I think if you just search for fees, you'll be you'll be able to find the page. Okay. So if you're website. interested in finding out the new fee schedule, go to the website penfield.org and look under fees. I think you can just put it as a quick link. A quick, it'll come up, but it's a very lengthy attachment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So again, uh, any uh, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ockaden. Aye. Four eyes. Authorization to settle GRHS Foundation, Inc. Tax certiorari proceedings. So moved. Second. The GRHS Foundation hereby commence proceedings against the assessor and the Board of Assessment Review and other respondents for review of the assessment for the years 2018 to 2023 for the premises located at 2030 Hagen Drive, located within the town of Penfield. Negotiations have been have been, had been between the attorney for the town and the attorneys for the petitioner in an attempt to settle and compromise the petitioner's claim. After such negotiations, tentative agreement has been reached between all parties of the terms of proposed settlement subject to the approval of the town board and to the approval of the Supreme Court of the state of New York, which terms of assessment are set forth in the stipulations on file with the Office of the Town Assessor. Upon due consideration of, on the effects and circumstances, the Town Board finds that the proposed compromise and settlement is fair and reasonable and should be approved. Therefore, be it resolved that the proposed settlement of the tax tertiary proceedings brought by GRHS Foundation for the years 2018 to 2023 are hereby approved. The attorney representing the town and is hereby directed to make application to the Supreme Court of the State of New York for approval of such settlement and that upon obtaining the approval, the assessor of the town of Penfield be hereby directed to make the necessary adjustment to the assessment rules for the town of Penfield to reflect the terms of the agreement. Okay, any discussion? Uh, seeing none, yes. Pete, are you, I, I understand that settlement negotiations mm -hmm. are confidential, but are you able to at least summarize for the sure. um, board and, uh, and in terms of risk mitigation, the settlement appears to be prudent? Yeah, so the, uh, the settlement in this case, this is in one involving a, um, a partial exemption uh, because it's a not-for-profit, but they also lease part of their space to for-profit entities, and so there was a dis disagreement about the correct percentage of uh, exempt use, and uh, we agreed based on the, the square footage and came up with a, a settlement that uh, actually increased the amount of the exempt percentage to 55% across both buildings, which interestingly enough, there are two buildings on one tax parcel and one building is bisected by the town line with the town of Brighton. So, but we've reached an agreement on that subject to the town board's approval and the stipulation is uh, in Chris Lyon's office actually. Okay, and it's your recommendation that the, yes. the board accept it. Okay, in reliance, in good faith reliance on that, I have no issues. Okay, any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadem. Aye. Four ayes. 
Authorization to prepare a re request for proposals for the preparation of conditions assessment of the Clark Road barn. So moved. Second. Whereas the town board previously adopted a resolution on May 3rd, 2023 to appoint members to the Clark Road Barn Advisory Committee. And whereas this advisory committee identified the need for a conditions assessment to know the barn's structure and potential associated costs to repair or restore the structure as part of their efforts to make an informed recommendation for future action by the board. The town board has discussed this need and the concerns for the um, desired professional design services, uh, believing them to be required. Therefore, be it resolved that the Penfield Town Board authorizes the Director of Developmental Services to prepare a RFP for this purpose um, uh, with the RFP schedule uh, as attached in Schedule A. Any discussion? Uh, Ms. Ivers, uh, being on that committee, I understand that we provided a courtesy copy to that advisory committee. I had not seen any feedback come through the group email or the distribution list. I'd like to confirm whether you received any feedback. I received two minor um, uh, typos that would spell check would not catch because okay. they were still words. So and nothing substantive. Those, no, nothing okay. substantive. Great. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? We will, we're, before we move to vote on the resolution to authorize the spending, spending for a study to, access, uh, to assess the structural um, condition of the Clark Road barn, I wanted to take a moment to um, explain why I'm voting no on this. For the past year, we've discussed uh, what to do with the barn following an interior uh, structural collapse that occurred last December, early last December. At the time of the collapse, it was re recommended that the structure be removed due to safety concerns. However, we elected not to move forward with the removal to evaluate the best um, path forward. This evaluation process has continued for well over a year, and in my opinion, we have reached the point where it's no longer prudent to pay um, for studies and assessments without an end goal. Um, to date, we spent upwards of all, over almost $20,000, maybe closer to $25,000, uh, with no proposal for what we would do with this barn or a consensus, even if it's worth saving. We've continued to spend money on a barn with no plan of how it would be utilized if rehabbed or how to pay um, for such a rehab. To continue spending our taxpayers' dollars with no clear ob um, objective is a disservice, I feel, to our community. Um, I treat the taxpayers' money like it's my own, and I've, um, I like to have a plan as how I spend my money, and the taxpayers' money is, um, with a purchase is, is no, um, no different. So I think we should focus on our limited for finances in a time of finalizing the rehab of the Clark House, which we are doing, um, which the next board will be um, looking at as well, and moving on other projects forward that benefit the whole town, such as our um, a new DPW f a construction that's on uh, ongoing in a new for a new, new DPW facility. Um, and I think that, that m this vote represents our commitments to being my commitment to being a good steward um, of the taxpayers dollars and ensuring projects of higher um, importance uh, um, move forward, um, including the Clark House, which is um, near and dear to everyone that's on the, on the Shadow Pines um, property. In a perfect world, I mean, we might have a Warren Buffett or a Bill Gates donate money um, for this. We would, or we'd have unlimited funds, but this is not the world we live in. And I, um, I don't take this decision lightly, and I just really wanted to state that because um, I'm doing what I believe is best for our community, and I respect whatever other people's decisions are, but with that, I would just move to a roll call vote. Draw. Uh, no. Cole. Aye. Lee. Yes. Akaden. Aye. Three ayes, one no. Okay, thank you. Authorization for supervisor to sign a contract with MRB Group for professional design services for a pedestrian bridge at Channing H. Philbrook Park. So moved. Second. Be it resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign a contract not to exceed $73,600 with MRB for the pedestrian, professional design services for a pedestrian bridge. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akaden. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization for the supervisor to sign a contract with GP Flooring Solutions for carpet tile replacement services at the Penfield Public Library. So moved. Second. 
Be it resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign a contract not to exceed $216,628.17 for carpet tile replacement services at the library with GP flooring. This resolution and the proposal submitted by them shall constitute the contract to be reviewed and approved by the town attorney. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four okay. eyes. Looking forward to those improvements in the library. Thank you. Purchase of one 2024 Chevrolet Silverado 3500 HD pickup truck. So moved. Second. Whereas the Director of Public Works desires to purchase a 2024 Chevy Silverado uh, from Denoyer Chevy Chevrolet in Albany for a total cost of $77,827.50. These funds were allocated in the 2022 highway budget, but due to supply chain issues, we were unable to purchase at that time. The town board now approves appropriation of said funds from the highway fund balance as an amendment to the budget to the uh, fund this purchase. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Purchase of three <laughs> 20, bless you. Bless you, 2024 Chevrolet Silverado 3500 HD pickup trucks. So moved. Second. Whereas the Director of Public Works desires to purchase three pickup trucks from the same dealer for a total cost of $207,511.50. Funds were allocated in the 2022 highway budget, but due to supply chain issues, those vehicles were not able to be purchased. Those funds are now available in the 2023 highway department budget totaling 75,000. The town board, as part of this approval, appropriates 132,511.20, the remainder, from the highway fund balance as an amendment to purchase uh, these vehicles uh, in full. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Tate, can you remind me again for the three um, pickup trucks, are they all to replace older vehicles? Are they adding to your fleet? Can you remind me, please? They are all replacements. Okay, and replacements being greater than 10 years. <laughs> yes. Thank yes. you. The newest one is, uh, the newest of the vehicles that are being replaced is actually 11 years old already. Okay, and, and, I, and I, again, I just want to confirm we have a scheduled maintenance and or replacement for such vehicles. These would have been in the prior year, but due to supply chain issues. So again, they are to replace all of them to re uh, older vehicles. I, and I note that, uh, again, because I think there are approximately yeah, uh, $300,000 going to purchase vehicles tonight. And I just want to be sure that we're not, you know. Nope, they are all for replacement vehicles. Um, it, you, well, there were two separate resolutions, one for one specific truck and then the other for um, the other resolution for three trucks. They are divided based on the, the trucks and the, the specs themselves. Um, these three that you're voting on right now um, are actually all identical to replace um, our crew cab trucks okay. for the, the work crews that are actually out and about all day. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization for supervisors to sign a contract with GP Flooring Solutions for VCT uh, tile replacement services at the Pemfield Community Center. So moved. Second. Be it resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign a contract not to exceed $22,660.75 for tile replacement services at the Penfield Community Center. The, this resolution and proposal submitted by them shall constitute the contract to be reviewed and approved by the town attorney. Okay. Any other discussion? I know that this is a much needed in that floor in the, in the community center. Um, so roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadem. Aye. Four ayes. Amendment to resolution uh, number 23T-219, roadway dedications for 2023. So moved. Second. Be it resolved that this resolution, uh, excuse me, uh, resolution 23T-219 was adopted on November 1st for 2023 roadway dedications. It unfortunately included a typo with uh, an incorrect street name. This resolution is to correct that street name within the Arbor's development uh, as a formality. It, it should have been town square place. Yes, thank you. Any discussion? I like the name Times Square, but <laughs> oh well. 
Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ockaden. Aye. Four ayes. Awarding a contract for the construction for the Allen's Creek <clears throat> Stream Restoration Project to JB's Excavation Services, Inc. So moved. Second. Whereas the town of Penfield desires to complete the Allen's Creek Stabilization Project, it's been designed in, and in permitting for many years. We received a grant from of 250000 from Senator Lunsford. Thank you, Senator Lunsford. Uh, to be allocated towards this new construction, sealed proposals were sought, received, opened, and read publicly by the town clerk. The bid submitted by JB's Excavation Services was found to be the lowest responsible and responsive bidder for the specified improvements and meets the town's bidding requirements. Be it resolved uh, that this contract and resolution be, re excuse, that the contract be awarded to JB Excavation Services for a total amount not to exceed 1,333,000. Any discussion? I'm happy to see that we're going to do that this coming year in 2024 because we did not get anyone to bid on it in um, 2023. So that was a disappointment, but we'll get it done. The next board will get it done. Yes. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akaden. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization to construct a new parking lot to support the newly constructed athletic fields at Rothfuss Park. So moved. Second. Whereas the town desires to construct new 88 asphalt milling parking lot adjacent to the existing uh, athletic fields at Rothfuss Park. The Penfield Town Board adopted the concept master plan for Rothfuss Park in 2002. The construction of, of these additional uh, spaces is uh, to accommodate expansion to that original master plan. The town board declares itself lead agency pursuant to the requirements of um, the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act and classifies this proposal as an unlisted action. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby makes a determination of a non-significance and adopts a negative declaration for this proposal, a copy of which is attached here too, and we approve the construction of the additional uh, parking lot spaces. Thank you. Any discussion? Much needed parking in that, in that much used park. Uh, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization to advertise for sealed proposals for the development of a bathroom parking lot and bathroom parking lot and pickleball courts at the Shadow Pines property. So moved. Second. Whereas the town board developed a master plan for Shadow Pines properties to address the recommendations of the Shadow Pines Moratorium Advisory Committee final report in 2016 and the Shadow Pines Land Use Advisory Committee final report in 2019. The town board subsequently authorized BME Associates to complete a site plan to address those components in the master plan and prepare bid documents for construction. The construction of the utilities, parking lot, bathroom facilities, pickleball courts, and other site infrastructure is a continuation of that master plan and furthers the town's goals for this property. On September 28, 2002, the board acting as lead agency pursuant to Seeker classified the proposed action as a type one action, adopted the full EAF parts two and three, the negative declaration document, and the uh, submission of a draft environmental impact statement was not required. Whereas after hearing input from town residents, interested stakeholders, um, and others regarding the potential impact to the property over many, many months, mm -hmm. the board reduced the overall footprint of the proposed development really to balance a lot of those competing interests and in trying to honor a lot of the master plan and really giving, um, uh, giving ear to a lot of those resident concerns. On August 16, 2003, at its work session, the board approved the final revised layout. And by this resolution, it is uh, be it resolved that the town engineer is authorized to advertise in the manner prescribed by law for sealed proposals uh, for said development. Thank you. Any discussion? I know we worked 
you, Councilwoman Lee, you've mentioned how hard we've all worked on this for the last, uh, year, really, a couple of years. So um, I'll be anxious to see what, how the bids come back in January. I won't be here, but you guys will all um, carry on with this, I'm sure. It's a, any other discussion on it? Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Awarding the contract for the installation of a dumpster enclosure in the Four Corners Municipal Parking Lot. So moved. Second. Whereas sealed bids were sought uh, for the town to construct a, a dumpster enclosure in the Four Corners Municipal Parking Lot, we received one from Loyal Nine Development Court and determined them to be the lowest responsible and responsive bidder for a total cost of 81,500. And whereas the town board approves appropriation of said funds from the highway fund balance to fund this project. By this resolution, the town board uh, would be awarding the contract to Loyal Nine Development Court. All right, any discussion? I had several questions for um, the Director of Public Works um, prior to tonight. I understand that only one bid was provided and um, I do have some questions as to that and whether or not we can test reasonableness of it to say that Loyal Nine Development Corps is the lowest responsible bidder when it's the only bidder gives me pause um, at the dollar amount that's being sought. Sure, um, and at, at first glance, it, I can say I also had a little sticker shock based on the, the price. Um, however, looking at their price breakdown, um, looking at the, the actual construction itself, the quantities, uh, kind of doing my own math and calculations based on the quantities, uh, what I know the unit prices are going for, what labor would be involved with it, I did kind of back into basically that same exact number. Um, in further discussions with Kerry Ivers, um, in some con um, some preliminary conversations she had with other contractors uh, that did give ballpark pricing. Um, we actually also, those contractors did not provide bids. Um, you know, they were originally estimating somewhere in the range of fifty to $60,000. Um, however, they did not provide bids because they do not do uh, perform any prevailing wage work. And uh, the estimates that they provided likely did not include prevailing wages um, because these are contractors that references we had received from developers and developers don't need to uh, honor prevailing wage. And so the 50 to 60,000 back in May and in today's construction cycle, every 30 days or every 60 days can mean an increase. Um, so seven months is gonna be a difference from point A to point B. And then additionally, contractors not customarily connected to um, prevailing wage work wouldn't factor that in. So even though that number is, again, a little sticker shock, we've all had that, um, based on the 50 to 60,000, that was an estimate we were trying to understand just to know whether or not we needed to go to bid for the project because public works under 35,000, no formal bid is needed, just quotation. And then we were sure that we were gonna need to go to bid just based on that initial gut check um, from the contractor. So if, was our staff able to calculate, or if we input the prevailing wage to those other market um, estimates, would that put it close to this figure? So if you take labor and materials, and I'm sorry, I'm stealing your nope. show here, <laughs> I apologize. Um, if you take the prevailing wage rate, it adds about 40% to labor costs. And so if you break down the total cost based on percentage of what's labor and what's materials, for sure you're getting to the 81,000. Um, I think the other factor here is um, the director of DPW put this bid out at the perfect time because um, it's calling for quotes now to do early spring work. Typically contractors are jumping at the opportunity to do that because um, uh, it provides a guaranteed workflow for the beginning of the year. So the fact that we only got one either means that other contractors are busy but it doesn't mean that more contract, more bids would result in uh, lower prices. I think another six months and it's only gonna get more expensive over time. Have we done work with Loyal Nine before? We have, um, and, and that was gonna be my next point. If, if the, the 
one and only bid came from a contractor that we had never used before, I would be a lot more hesitant. Uh, this contractor is actually the same contractor that recently completed the, the new restroom facility over here in Veterans Memorial Park near the softball uh, fields. Okay. I mean, I, I had some pause as to whether or not it's worth um, reissuing the bids, but uh, based on the factors you've shared, is it your recommendation for the board to then move forward with this? That would be yes. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadim. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization to install yield signs within the Beacon Hills neighborhood. So moved. Second. Whereas it's the town of Penfield's responsibility to promote and maintain public safety on roads within the town, pursuant to New York State Vehicle and Traffic Locks Section 1660, the Penfield Town Board has granted the authority to authorize the establishment of traffic control devices on town highways within the town of Penfield. And the town board has received requests for the installation of traffic control device signage at the intersections of Cove Circle, Rockhurst Drive, at Beacons, Beacon Hills Drive South. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby authorizes that yield signs be established on Cove Circle and Rockhurst Drive at Beacon Hills Drive South. Be it further resolved, the town board hereby authorizes and directs the director of public works to install said yield signs within that neighborhood. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, so I, um, yes, I actually mm -hmm. ha had a couple comments and questions, mm -hmm. but I, I see that Mark is, is not here. So um, I understand that this, um, when the resolution came before us at the last session, it was uh, reviewed and recommended by the Transportation Committee, two of, of the members who um, have are residents of this Beacon Hills neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of surprised um, after we authorized for the removal of the stop signs that we had some negative uh, comments back and resident concerns. Uh, we did drive through that neighborhood again to kind of see where the removal of the stop signs caused concern or issue. I, I, I learned since that there was a communication issue between the town, the residents, um, and the HOA association there. So I've made it clear to both Director of Public Works as well as our engineering team that we need to work with the HOA. Um, I understand that this is again going before the Transportation Committee in February, yes. and they are really the subject matter experts, and I rely heavily on their recommendation. So the yield signs, I don't have um, an issue with it as a temporary uh, fix uh, council councilperson Ockenden. Um, of course, that they are going to be permanent signs there, um, and I think because there are currently no traffic control devices at that intersection, we need something there in the meantime while it's it's further um, vetted. Uh, but I but I did want to raise that you know be, before we remove signs, especially in a in a residential area where it's been there for many many years, we just need to make sure. Uh, that we communicate with those residents and any um, association so that it's not taking them by surprise. Okay. I would agree. We, okay. We've had a lot of conversation in the last week or mm -hmm. two about this, and um, so I think this is the next step, and then uh, further review and evaluation is warranted. So. At the, and they will take a look yeah. at this at the transportation meeting in February, early February. Okay. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadim. Aye. Four ayes. Okay, so that leads us into new business. Um, Madam Clerk, there's several. Setting a public hearing to consider adopting local law of 2024 to modify the tax exemption for senior citizens. So moved. Second. This is first of two resolutions that need public hearings. They're uh, setting a public hearing to adopt the local law on, uh, to modify tax exemption for senior citizens. There's some information on the attachment of what is going to be uh, changed, but it's uh, things being crossed out and added and so on like that. You'll get more information at the public hearing, which this resolution sets the that the uh, town board shall hold a public hearing at the town hall on January 3rd 
immediately following the organizational meeting to consider the proposal to hear all persons interested in the question of adoption of the local law, which will modify the definition of income as authorized by the New York State Real Property Tax Law, Section 467. This will amend Local Law 1 of 1977. Okay. So it, uh, the clerk shall be directed to publish and post a notice of the public hearing on an official sign board in the manner prescribed by law, the first publication now less than five days, and not more than 30 days before the date set for the public hearing. Thank you. Again, we're just setting the public hearing tonight, so roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Setting a public hearing to consider adopting a local law for 2024 to modify the real property tax exemption for persons with disabilities and limited incomes. So moved. Second. As the clerk said, this is to set the, the public hearing for uh, for of the <clears throat> modify the real property tax exemption for persons with disabilities and limited income. It too will follow the uh, organizational meeting of the town board on January 3rd. Um, to consider the proposal and to hear all persons interested in the question of the adoption of this local law. Okay. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Determination of project funded by the state and local fiscal recovery funds allocation under the American Rescue Plan Act. So moved. Aye. The town of Penfield received. Second. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Second. I know what you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the town. The town of Penfield received three million eight hundred twenty-five thousand seven hundred thirty-two dollars and eight cents under the American Rescue Plan Act local fiscal recovery funds. The town board previously allocated funding in the totaling two million four hundred sixty-six thousand towards projects in the Shadow Pines property, the LED street light upgrade, and renovations at the library's Brayman room. The town board spent several months reviewing additional projects to be funded under this program and sought the advice and counsel of the town attorney and third party auditor. Therefore, be it resolved, the town board hereby authorizes $800,000 for improvements to the town's sanitary and storm sewers, including the slip lining of approximately 18,000 linear feet of pipe. Be it further resolved, this project will be completed in accordance with the town's procurement pro policies and all applicable federal state regulations and guidelines. This is something we discussed at a work session. Yes. So um, I'm happy to see that we're, we're all all allotting some more of these uh, um, ARPA funds. Um, and just so you know, there will still, after even after we uh, allot these tonight, there will still be $559,643 for the next town board to um, obligate by 12-31-24. Um, uh, so next year, we'll have to um, make sure that they get on for a project um, uh, and get that done. So thank you. Uh, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Rescinding previous town board approvals related to a proposed project located on a portion of 41 Woodhaven Drive. So moved. Second. Town board previously reviewed two separate applications submitted by K2 Brewing Company associated with the proposed development of an ancillary parking lot located at the portion of 41 Woodhaven Drive. Town board approved the incentive zoning application on July 6, 2022, and the subdivision and preliminary final site application on September 22, 2022. Whereas the, appro the approvals are all being challenged by neighboring property owners in a proceeding commenced under Article 78 of the CPLR, and whereas the applicant made other arrangements for ancillary parking, and whereas the applicant no longer wishes to move forward with the approvals and has submitted a request via email to the town board to rescind its approvals of the aforementioned application. Whereas the action has been classified a type 2 action pursuant to state environmental quality act Regulations now therefore be resolved that the town board hereby rescinds resolution 22 T-176 and resolution 22 T-177 making the previously granted application approvals for incentive zoning subdivision and preliminary final site plan null and void Okay any discussion board? 
Yeah, I wish we could have called this one earlier because I know you've been waiting so patiently <laughs> for this last resolution. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to make a few notes that as um, uh, this has been a, a long process mm -hmm. under review by council um, who's really been um, been been leading the the um, uh, related litigation and the only action or the limited review by the board is to rescind um, the incentive zoning and subdivision and the preliminary final site uh, plan to that. Of course, it's not a guarantee that any other parking lot in the future or 50 years from now or whatever happens with, with that site, if there were such application, it would still have to go through all of the processes that the council mentioned and go through all of the appropriate approvals. But that's not being determined tonight. Again, we are only being asked to rescind by the applicant's request those incentive zonings. Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Weishar? No, well, maybe just that there was a third application that's not involved here regarding the um, subdivision, or I'm sorry, site plan um, application pertaining to the brewery itself. That's not part of this. It's only the two applications regarding 41 Woodhaven, which is the ancillary parking yes. that was obtained through incentive zoning. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Yes. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ockaden. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization for supervisor to submit a purchase offer for real property. So moved. Second. Whereas the Penfield Central School District is selling 38.79 acres of vacant land located at 3021 Atlantic Avenue. The town board wishes to tender a uh, an offer for the property based on estimated market value per an independent appraisal. appraisal. The town board has identified a public pur purpose for the property. Be it resolved, the supervisor is hereby is authorized to submit a contingent offer for the property, and if accepted, the acquisition would be funded by the unassigned general fund balance and subject to completion of a review under the State Environmental Quality Review Act and any permissive referendum that may be required under the New York State town law. Okay. Can, we, can we talk about this one, please, mm -hmm. and sure. talk about the speed at which it's coming before the board and, mm -hmm. and the reasons behind that? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, we came to find out that the uh, Penfield School District had some properties that it was available to sell on Atlantic Avenue. Just in the last few weeks, we had to get an appraisal for this a town appraisal for it, and we just received this really right before the meeting. This land, if we were to purchase it, um, we have a need for when our new DPW um, garage is being built, we are not going to have a place um, to put brush, and I will let Mr. Tate go in more in detail about that. <coughs> we're looking for a place, we're actively looking for a place, and this might, might, um, might be a, po a possibility for us. Yeah. So um, not only you know, throughout the duration of construction, um, but also, you know, post-construction, just based on, I guess, the, the size of the usable area at uh, what is our current uh, DPW facility at 1607 Jackson Road, uh, the fact that we would be, we're replacing a uh, kind of a smaller building that we've overgrown with a much larger building, the, the site and the usable yard doesn't, I guess the overall usable area at the site does not change. Um, however, we are going to be occupying more space with the building um, you know, what in really the the space in which our current brush drop-off and um, kind of excess mulch pile takes mm -hmm. up um, Therefore we will need another an alternate location to be able to continue to offer that service to residents uh, Certainly want to make sure that that is a priority and that we can do that um, and you know with that have been looking for for alternate locations trying to come up with different ideas um, as the supervisor mentioned, this this recently came up. Um, I know it is you know very quick and in kind of short notice, um, but you know certainly want to at least make every attempt to be able to secure the property uh, with the idea that we would be able to continue to offer these services. And, and, and so, uh, forgive me. I, I th when this came up, I was kind of um, I was trying to. Uh, digest a lot of the, mm -hmm. the information sure. and I like had to go through all my notes about the DPW um, new construction and like the the, the designs um, by the engineer and I, and I just I could not um, 
recall, and I had no notation of, of my own, that with the expansion of the building, that brush drop-off would be permanently removed from the new and upgraded site. And so I'm kind of shocked by that, that it wasn't incorporated into the bid design. I, I know that we were trying to incorporate, like, you know, um, more renewable energy sources and solar, like, in, in that, that general region. And I know we had talked about temporary brush drop off like on five mile and a property there. So I, I guess I'm, if we don't win this bid, what is your plan? What is the strategic plan to ensure that this resident service is going to be maintained? Uh, so again, as you mentioned, we do have another property on five mile line that would be an option. Um, you know, we can look at other, I guess other town owned properties um, would certainly need to consult with our, our town council on that. Um, I don't have the, I guess I don't have a specific answer as to what what the exact or definitive option number two would be. Um, we do have a few options. Um, you know, they, they all present challenges. Mm -hmm. um, this would be the best option if we were chosen. Uh, there's no guarantee that we would be chosen yeah, as part of this. So um, but it would be so can I just add to, uh, to what Mr. Tate's saying? Um, we are actively looking to, um, to this board. We're looking in other areas in, in, in Penfield to uh, properties to either purchase, uh, lease. We are doing our, uh, doing our due diligence on that. The opportunity came up to, pos to put a bid in on this property. Again, it will be up to this, um, up to the school board how many bids come in, whether or not e we'd, we'd even be have an option to to be chosen for this. So again, like I know you were, we, we're, so we're, we're at a point now where we are, this is one option. There might be others that, you know, there, there might be the bird property. There might be something else that we can find, but we're in the process of doing, doing this so that in the next three months, when this is going to happen, when we're actually needing to have, um, so we find something. Yeah, so, so I, I, I understand that it, an appraisal, an independent appraisal, sure. uh, which fell, um, to at least authorize the, the funding for that appraisal fell but beneath the $5,000 threshold, so the supervisor went ahead with that, and the estimated mm -hmm. uh, fair market value came at just shy of 300000 yes. So, I mean, you talked about earlier about being a, a steward of taxpayer mm -hmm. funding. I guess I'm just shocked that we're spending millions for the DPW facility, and, and we didn't account for this, like, used resident service. So, again, I and, and the, the bid has to be Submitted by December thirteenth, fourteenth, the fourteenth. So, so I understand that you mm -hmm. know the, the speed at, at which we have to move forward with this, um, and I think you had mentioned even if we were awarded the bid, does it commit the board to then approve? That's correct. No, I think you said that that answer was no, right? If we were awarded the bid, it does not commit us to. There are a number of contingencies. So, th so a couple things. First, this RFP came out less than a month ago, and I, I think. My understanding is a bit of a surprise that uh, the school district went ahead and made, made this uh, RFP. And um, so that caused us to kind of have to go and get the appraisal so that we knew what the value of the property was. In looking at the, uh, the RFP and the uh, next contract that they're anticipating using, it, it's, it is, it's, it's kind of flexible. And basically, if you are the winner of the RFP, then what that Enables it enables the district to then negotiate with you on the, the final contract and the terms. The contract itself that they've attached has actually got a number of contingencies in it, including attorney approval, um, including one that was a concern that I had uh, initially is how are we going to handle Seeker. They've built that into their draft mm -hmm. contract that it's going to be subject to that they need to do Seeker also. So if it was something that we were going to you know, submit. Uh, I would anticipate if this is approved that we would submit a contingent offer. Okay. It would be contingent on a number of things, including seeker, including I think there's a possibility that it would require a permissive referendum. So we would make it subject to a permissive referendum, and then any other you know contingencies that we we think would would warrant including in that in that proposal. So it would be kind of a basically an offer to kind of then negotiate. They they base. I'm anticipating that. They would then select the party that is interested then to negotiate a final contract, and then we'd have an opportunity at that point to say, um, you know, maybe Seeker comes back and is a, a pause deck or some other reason that we, we don't want to go through with it. Will it come back before the board for approval before the contract is executed? Yeah. 
Yes, yes, it would have to come back because this only you're only authorizing um, basically responding to the RFP and, and basically putting in a proposal to. Um, we, so what we'd have to do is I would have to work with Debbie in drafting language that would not bind the the town to purchase the property because right. it's subject to all these other contingencies that we haven't done yet. And one of the things I would think, you know, maybe we would offer to be lead agency since we both have to do it. And it's even if it's an unlisted action, you could have coordinated review. So that might be something to entice the school district to pick us over somebody else that might ha might have a, a higher um, threshold number. So they're not, you know, they're. They've left this to have a lot of contingencies in it. It's not okay. a, they're not sending an offer that we then accept. Right, 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 right. So, right. There's so there's like enough flexibility okay. and kind of, um, you know, it's not as firm as I initially thought it was going to be. So when I looked at this today, I thought we could do a, a contingent proposal. Okay, so that, that gives me a little bit of, of assurance because I think, again, yeah. by putting, I understand the, the speed tonight that we have to at least. Um, move forward with the bid, which which please confirm, will cost no money to enter the bid. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's being prepared by town staff. Correct. Um, and mm -hmm. it's not gonna cost us anything, so we have to get at least our, our um, our, our bid in before the door closes. Yes. And then so long as one of the contingencies is that it doesn't um, commit the town to then purchasing mm -hmm. it. Because I, you know, again, I, I, I think uh, we need to work on the assumption that we won't get the bid and we need to think of a plan. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, again, Mr. Leanhouse and Ms. Teglash is still um, in listening because we've got our work cut out for us to ensure that the, the resident service continues. I thought, again, temporarily while construction made sense to me, but to then hear that it's not going to be offered, I'm just shocked. <laughs> So again, so I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I understand okay. this is a ledge session, yeah. but I had a lot of comments with this that's being presented fine. literally the day before. Mm -hmm. So um, it's and, and if it came, if the bid came out a month ago, we had time to get this before a work session where I would have really flushed out all of these comments. Right. So I, I don't want to take up everyone's one's time, but again, I am asking uh, that we come up with a plan for review at the next work session, please. And one of the things, and thank you, one of the things that I'm going to work, we're working tomorrow, we're going to continue to work on other, other locations and other options. I mean, this is something that um, Mr. Tate, Mr. Valentine, we are working, we've reached out to a number of other um, organiz uh, people in town, you know, and the county, trying to look for other locations as well. Again, this location is ideal if we were to. It's, lo it's a location near the near the facility uh, near, near, near the DPW again it has it fits a lot of a lot of our our, our, our needs, needs. And yeah, yes yeah, yeah, I get but it. again if something else were to come up absolutely if some of those gentlemen that were here tonight farm we've I've asked personally asked them about their land about purchasing some of the land we we've, we've talked about that but again there we're not getting anybody that right now we're we're trying to find out if there's anything available. So we are doing, and I promise you, those last few weeks I'm here, that's one of the things I'm gonna um, work with them to, to look for um, options for that. So again, if the, because I, you're right, we might not get this as well. It might just be a, a bid offer, and but we'll do our due diligence and try to get it. Okay? So we can make it, I mean, in addition to seeker and any permissive referendum, you know, we'd make it contingent on final board approval. Sure. The, yes, that would make me feel contract. more mm -hmm. comfortable. Thank you. And it will be the next board by the time you, the next right. board will be able to take a look at this. We won't be hearing back till after January on this, or you won't be. Fair enough. Cool. Any yep. other? How about a roll call vote? Draw. Aye. Cold. Aye. Lee. Aye. Hockenden. Aye. Thank, thank Four you. Ayes. Thank you all. Uh, with that being said of the new business, we have no exec executive session tonight. The next meeting of, the, of your Penfield Town Board will be the organizational meeting on January 3rd, where our supervisor-elect there, uh, Jeff Leanhouse, will be leading um, this board. And I see Linda Taglish is over here in the audience. Welcome. Congratulations again to both of you and also to um, Kevin Berry, who's not here, but um, uh, uh, and for serving on the board, you will be joining um, Council, Councilwoman uh, Lee and Akedin up here um, in January. So um, I guess I just want to really finally thank you all for, um, again, for um, 
entrusted me the honor of being the supervisor here this last year. I've really enjoyed it working with the staff, um, and uh, I will miss you all. And uh, maybe Linda, Linda, um, Linda too. We, we already spoke. Once, I know but, we did. Uh, you know. So, but I wish you. I all. think for the honor to be a town representative mm -hmm. all these years, it's it's been great. And uh, happy holidays. Yes. <laughs> and have a blessed and happy um, uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. And uh, we'll see you all in 2024. And I just got to do a shout out to my uh, daughter there in the audience. It's her birthday. Happy oh. birthday, oh. Holly. <laughs> so, last by last year. Happy, Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy so, again, birthday. thank you all that stayed. I want to thank, again, staff, uh, PCTV, again. Sometimes I forget to thank them. Thank you guys down there, Brian and Wes tonight. Penfield Security out there. Thanks, the guys here. Again, thank you for the beautiful um, uh, party in the rotunda. To Candace and Bob, we will miss you. Thank you again for, for all you've done and you'll continue to do to Amy as well, Pete, and everything, and God bless you guys. Have a, have a good, um, have a good, have a have good a life. Good, have a good <laughs> life. I'll see you, I'll see, I'll see you around. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>